I played Miss Lovett in Sweeney Todd. Nice to see you, dearie. How have you been keeping? Call me bones weary. Told me one for the gentleman. I played Adolfo Pirelli. You hear this man? Watch and see how you regret his folly. I was Joanna. I played Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd is about a man in love with death. He comes back to London after being sent down to a prison colony by a corrupted judge who was in love with his wife. There was a father and his wife, and she was beautiful. A foolish barber and his wife, she was his reason and his life, and she was beautiful, and she was virtuous. So Sweeney, thinking that his wife was dead, he hates the judge more than anything in the world. He despises him, and he thinks that revenge is what's going to leave him satisfied. Would no one have mercy on her? So it is you, Benjamin Barker! No, no, not Barker, not Barker! It's Todd now, Sweeney Todd, and he will have his revenge. Look at me, look at me, Mistle, look at me, please. Oh, favor me, favor me with your glance. While Sweeney's gone, the judge ends up taking over Joanna's life. Joanna is Sweeney Todd's daughter. The judge takes Joanna and he raises her, but as he raises her, he tries to marry her when she gets older. Joanna! Joanna! Oh dear! If I see you on this or any other neighbor's street, you will rue the day you were born. Is that plain enough speaking for you? But sir, I, I swear to you, there was nothing in my heart but the most respectful sentence. This goes of him! Oh dear, I knew it! She kind of contrasts from everyone else in that she's a little bit more proper and, um, maybe not quite as evil <laughs> as a lot of the other people, even though she definitely has a lot of layers. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, pay no attention to that bad man. I'm a man called Adolfo Pirelli. I literally try to blackmail him. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna tell everybody you're Benjamin Barker, and then you're gonna be gone. So give me half your profits. You think are you smart? You foolish boy. course, shoves me in a trunk, and that's when he gets the urge that, oh, this is what I have to do. This is, this is what I'm meant to do with my razors. Mr. T, you did. <gasps> You're a crazy man! Killing a man who done you no harm, and the boy downstairs! You recognized me from the old days. Threatened to blackmail me half of my earnings forever. Oh. Well, that's a different matter entirely, dear. Oh, good. For a moment, I thought you lost your marbles. I wanted Miss Lovett to be someone that the audience could feel bad for, even though, like, I know a lot of her motivations weren't very selfless. Think of it as thrift, as a gift, if you get my drift. No. I mean, with the price of meat, what it is, when you get it, if you get it, oh. good you got it, take for instance Mrs. Mooney at the pie shop. Sweeney, a barber, has his tonsorial parlor above her pie shop. The customers go in, he gets them, sends them down to her pie shop, and then she puts them into pies. There in your sample, this is love, it's meat pies, savory and sweet pies, as you'll see. I was an ensemble member. I was an ensemble member. I think I was the first person to be killed up on the set. My sweet Joanna. I think 
that was one of the more difficult scenes for me because it's not just like you have to do it yourself, but it's also like you have to try not to laugh and like you have to have like a straight face and pretend you're actually dead. And I think we worked it out where it was pretty good. At first, it was somewhat awkward because some of the people that I needed to pretend to kill, I didn't know very well. But as time went on, we became more comfortable and they were just like, just do this. And I was like, okay. It was difficult in different ways. So for some ensemble members, we were on stage constantly. And so it was really difficult to like keep, the, keep track of the songs because many of the songs were solos that we came in and then we just started a ballad rather than it being a song and then a break and then a song. We used fog machines for our last play too and it just adds, it adds a lot to the scene and the way that the lights hit the fog, it looks a little bit more eerie and creepy. And it kind of just adds to that like London fog, dark idea that we were trying to go for the whole time. I think in total we have around 60 people and about a 30 person cast. So that's around 30 people on crew that are just constantly, constantly doing stuff. And we're really lucky here because the people who are doing it really love theater and really want to be a part of it and just want the show to go well. So we have specific roles that people are in charge of for each show. So someone is reading the script and giving us lighting cues and telling us standbys for when we need to be changing the cue. The show is supposed to be set in the 1800s, so obviously men were wearing like top hats usually. I'll steal you, but we originally had plain top hats and the great costumes crew glued all of that stuff onto the hats to make them look more cohesive and like fit the time period. So they worked really hard getting those hats to be the way they looked. That's a laugh in being my uncle's cousin that just arrived from Birmingham yesterday. Before Sweeney, I used to just like talk in a random Cockney accent around my, my mom and she thought it was so annoying, but like it was oddly easy putting it into songs like I'm singing in a Cockney accent and my biggest fear was making sure that people can understand me. Joanna's songs definitely differed from everybody else because she is definitely more of a soprano. She sings very high and um, a little bit less kind of talky than everyone else. Um, it's almost a little bit more operatic, which is actually what I'm, I'm trained in. So um, that was more kind of um, natural for me. The way Sondheim wrote the score, it was so interesting because there were words being said where it doesn't really feel like words should be said in this part of, of the music but the lyrics were there and while the melody was here and it was like, it felt very mismatched, but purposefully mismatched. But it's here, it's just come up the stair. It's about to be open, but don't you care? The music for high school students is intense. The timing is so weird. He constantly has these key changes and time signature changes where it goes from 3-4 to 4-4 to like sometimes even like 7-8 at some points. I think that my favorite part of the show was Epiphany because Epiphany, I just do a whole red wash on the stage, so it's like very chaotic. And also Greg, he was able to go up to the apron of the stage and like interact with the audience during that song. You suck! You suck! Welcome to the grave! I think my favorite part would be Pirelli's Miracle Elixir. Like the contest and all of that was probably one of my favorite because we all got to work together. So it was really fun to do with all my friends. The winner is Todd. <gasps> I'm gonna remember this show for quite a long time. I don't think I'm ever gonna forget it. Everyone works so hard and I think that it's a very memorable show for everyone. And when I finally saw what it looks like, it was, I honestly, 
still speaking right now surprises me. It was beautiful. I think that we did amazing. I don't see it as just the face value of the performance, but I see more of the work that goes into it. And that's what makes me really proud. It's just so amazing that every member of this community is just so valued. Ensemble kind of comes on and does their bows, and then the like supporting leads come on, and then the leads come on, and then they do a bow as a cast, and then they kind of do a little motion. So all of crew walks on, and we like line up, and then we do a like company bow, and then the curtain closes, and everyone is just you know gets their moment to be like applauded for by the audience. 